Bible references in Dave Ramsey's finance textbook incites outrage in a Florida school district. And basically, to summarize it, a whole bunch of Karens are complaining about Dave Ramsey. And not even necessarily what's inside the book for the most part, but just because who Dave Ramsey is and that he believes in God. Which is like crazy. It's like, oh wow, so you want to like try to get a finance book out of school that would help kids be better at managing money all because the guy believes in God? <laughs> okay, you nut jobs. <laughs> so it's a Florida fight to the debt. Critics are objecting to the use of famed money guru. Dave Ramsey's finance textbook in Pasco County schools arguing that it alludes to the Bible, decries all forms of debt, and fails to focus on key math skills. The district received nearly 60 letters opposed to the evangel- evangelical Christians' foundations in personal finance being used in classrooms as part of a new financial literacy requirement. God forbid we have a few Bible proverbs in there, from the district source, considering all the controversial and that's putting it mildly, subject matter we see in books and textbooks these days, that's a laugh in my opinion. Which, by the way, I don't think people have read that many proverbs in their life, but they probably should, regardless if you believe in God or not, because a lot of these proverbs are like a pretty useful tool as to like how you should live your life to like improve it. Say so those who but those who oppose the books use aren't chuckling. The Florida Department of Education approved the book for use in classrooms in 2022. The move came from uh, came after Governor Ron DeSantis signed new legislation requiring a financial literacy course for incoming high school freshmen beginning the next academic year. The campaign against Ramsey's book was spearheaded by the Florida Freedom to Read Project, a nonprofit organization opposed to the introduction of conservative leaning materials into school libraries. The group has also objected to the use of materials from Prager U, a conservative media group helmed by radio host Dennis Prager. I think the overall curriculum adoption process has been infected, especially in Florida board member Jessica Wright told NPR. It's become hotly political. DeSantis critics argue has sought to impose right-leaning viewpoints into public schools, and the outlet reported that Wright obtained official state and county reviews of the book that found it lacking in several areas, including an omission of math concepts related to finance. Others question the overtly Christian references in the text, asserting that the religious content was inappropriate for public schools. The district stores argued that students learn math in dedicated math classes and that opposition to the book was rooted in discomfort with the author's perceived political leanings. Let's be honest, she said, this is about the profile of the writer, not the content. Other objectors cited Ramsey's blanket opposition to any type of debt. Those positions, they argued, were unrealistic and counterproductive. Now, here's the thing, right? Like, me personally, and like on this podcast, radio thing, whatever, channel, I push for people getting out of debt as well. Because having debt limits the amount of cash flow that comes in per month, right? Because so much money, typically for the average person, is going out to pay your debt bills, right? And a lot of people don't realize how much debt is really weighing them down. And the problem with saying good debt and like bad debt or like debt could be good is that the the majority of people cannot handle using debt to their advantage, right? Why do you think, for example, like more than... I think 50% of the United States population is morbidly obese, or obese, I think that is. Maybe not morbidly obese, I don't think most people are like that crazy, but 
like I think it's about over 50% of people are like obese, right? In the United States, like more than 50%. So if people don't have the self-control when it comes to food, do you think that they're going to have the self-control in terms of using debt to their advantage? Now, the problem with the debt route is that it compounds like crazy, right? So if you make financial mistakes in terms of debt, right, a $5,000 mistake or a $10,000 mistake will end up going to like $100,000 given enough time to the point where you're physically not able to handle it anymore. Like You don't have enough time in the day to work the amount of hours that you got to do to pay it off. You, if you're doing a commission, it's going to be really hard to find enough, I guess, enough like sales jobs or products that are worthwhile to sell to try to pay that off. Like the problem with debt, it gets to the point where it's working against you so much that it basically makes it as if you can't actually take a step forward, right? Where because this is the thing, right? Because a lot of people don't just have one debt. They have a lot of different debts typically and the minimum payments on all of those debts keep going up and up and up and up every single month. So you could get a situation, for example, where like let's say that you make $4,000 after taxes per month, right? Your minimum payments can get to the point where they exceed that $4,000 per month that you bring in, meaning you pretty much got no hope at that point. You could file for bankruptcy, but that completely destroys your finances for like seven years. So it's just something to really understand. Like a lot of people cannot handle any amount of debt, period, right? So this, they say, instructing students to spend all disposable income erasing debt rather than learning to appropriately use it to their advantage is too severe, one stated according to NPR. Now, what's also kind of funny, because this was like in like a school district or like school council, whatever kind of stuff, I bet you that more than half of the people complaining about this probably are drowning in student loan debt, Right? I bet you they are, right? And they're trying to say like, oh yeah, you got to explain how people could use debt to their advantage. Like, guess what? If you are carrying any amount of debt, you're not really capable of basically using it to your advantage, right? And I mean mainly consumer debt, right? So cars, credit cards, personal loans, payday loans, etc. If you're carrying any amount of those, like any amount of debt on those types of things, or like store cards, you cannot handle using debt to your advantage, period, end of story, right? Because you're paying interest on things that like simply won't make you money, right? You technically could use debt to generate more money on like an exponential level, but you still got a bunch of risk when you go and do that. And if you are already carrying consumer debt, you're really not the type of person that can handle that type of risky situation. So part of our work with this instruction should be to educate students on how to identify good versus bad debt. Mortgage versus credit cards, for instance, not how to avoid it altogether. Yeah, see, the thing is, there's not really anything true about good debt versus bad debt, right? It's all debt, right? You're still on the hook for that payment per month, no matter what, right? So it's not good debt versus bad debt. It's can I afford it? or not, right? That's the reality. Can I afford it or not? And if 
you're putting things on credit cards for the majority of people you can't afford it and the majority of people can't really afford their mortgage either because typically they don't have enough money coming in to cover like a $500 emergency so if anything happens to that home that they got a mortgage on they're pretty much screwed financially speaking so yeah People really need to change their perception on like good debt versus bad debt and whatnot. Just keep it simple. Can I afford whatever I am trying to buy? If the answer is no, don't try to buy it with debt. Lord. Sometimes people are like so bad with money. And the fact that like you have a whole bunch of people complaining about him because of just him having like a religious view is like the financial principles are still sound, right? Staying out of debt is still a very good idea for the majority of people. The others were uncomfortable with Ramsey's tendency to bluntly blame individuals for their, for the state of their finances. So, if it's not the person who got the debt's fault for getting into debt, whose is it then? Right? It's like, oh... Should I blame someone else for spending money on this Celsius energy drink? Like, what? I swear, some people are just stupid. A spokesperson for the author did not return a post request for comment, and the district will issue a final decision on the book's adoption later this month. Like, I mean, this is just completely absurd, right? It's like, wow, you guys are so that emotionally, like, weak that you're going to cry about a guy trying to instill or teach people sound financial advice that the majority of people can use to their advantage all because he's a Christian? Like, really? You are going to screw over kids' financial success because a guy's Christian? Like, the fact that you have people, like, wasting time, energy, and money to complain about this sort of thing is beyond crazy to me. It's like, wouldn't you want people to be better with their money? Like, Lord. See some of these comments. Most people who are against having any religious references in schools are also against a financially literate electorate. It's hard to say what's more offensive to him. Yeah, the problem is so many people spend more than they make, try to justify it by saying it's good debt. Instead of bragging about a car payment at 3.9%, pay for a small used car with cash and save up for something nicer down the road. Don't make auto dealers and finance companies rich. Mortgages are fine if you pay them off well before 30 years. Student loans, please. We have a $1.7 trillion crisis with students begging for debt relief and forgiveness. Teach students there are other avenues, scholarships, community college for a year or two. The trade schools stop paying exorbitant sums to colleges and universities as though graduating with lots of debt is the only choice. And let's not even get started on credit cards. Trading off 15 to 20% interest rates for 2% cash back is a way to the poor house. So many people claim to pay off their bills every month until they don't or can't go Ramsey. The crazy thing is... Is actually not really 15 to 20 percent. A lot of credit cards nowadays are like up to like 30 percent interest rates, which is like mind blowing. Like, wow, you're getting cash back, woo, and you're risking having to pay 30 percent. Now, the thing is, if you're good at managing your money. Yes, you could technically take some benefits from using like a credit card or whatever, but you also got to realize it from this perspective. You're only getting any sort of benefits because people are not getting that benefits. And if you're understanding what I mean is that basically the reason why you got benefits is because people are continuously losing money because they can't pay their bills on time. So, you are basically swimming in the dollars. Like, okay, basically, it's like 
you're swimming in a pool of money where that money came from people not able to pay their bills. <laughs> right? Like, oh, man, it's horrible. Let's see. Let's see. There's nothing wrong in telling young people that debt is bad. Once they get a job and have a decent cash flow, they can assume some debt, no debt, is a good habit. The thing is, yes, they could technically afford to pay the payments on the debt, but they pretty much can't really afford whatever it is that they're actually trying to buy truly right like for example like you might want to buy a brand new car right but the only way you could really pay for that car is doing car payments but the average car payment right now is like i think 800 or 900 bucks per month just the car payment not including insurance for like a brand new car so that's like potentially over a thousand dollars going out of your bank account every month on something that is going to go down in value basically with a 99.999 percent guarantee that it's going to go down in value right now people do the whole like good debt because oh if you were to put that into a mortgage oh that'd be such a good option but like would it really because with the interest rates right now where they're pretty much close to like 8%, it's not really that great of an option. Like maybe at like a 1% mortgage rate, 2% mortgage rate, 3% mortgage rate wouldn't be that bad. But like it's getting to the point where you would actually make more return on your money by just sticking it into a bank account, like a high yield savings account without any risk at all, which is hilarious. Yeah, a lot of people are like, you know, kind of like fighting back and forth about good debt, bad debt, all that kind of stuff, right? And to, and like, here's the thing too, right? Like, for example, some people who are super rich do use debt, right? So, for example, billionaires, a way for them to basically avoid having to pay taxes is like, let's say that they own like a billion dollars worth of Apple stock, right? They could take a loan against their assets of a billion dollars. So they could easily take like a 40, 50 million dollar loan against some of their assets, right? So like, let's say that they'll have like, uh, they'll dedicate like 50 million dollars of their Apple stock for this loan to like back it, but only actually get like a cash amount of like, 30 mil or 35 mil out of the 50 million dollars as like collateral right but they could use that money for pretty much anything that they want to live on to create companies to create another income stream but on like when it comes down to like tax time if they didn't have like any sort of extra income right is seen as they didn't make any money that they actually lost like you know 40 million or whatever right 35 million because they took a loan for that amount of money so they literally had no income meaning that they didn't have to pay taxes so that is a way that some billionaires and some wealthy millionaires can like avoid paying taxes by using debt but is that really worth the hassle probably not in terms of like how much time that you'd be dedicating to do it But some people have done that before. I believe Elon Musk did that before. I'm pretty certain Bezos did that before too. Although I think Bezos more so likes to sell his stock and then buy stuff. But still, like there's ways to use debt to your advantage. But for like, again, the majority of people, it's not going to work out for you. Because the majority of people carry debt. 
like on credit cards where they're paying like a 30% interest.